Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini, and if you have fabric scraps but don't know what to do with them, keep watching, because in this video tutorial, I'll teach you how to take those fabric scraps, we'll add batting and a zipper, and turn them into these adorable and functional scrappy zippered pouches. To start, you want to cut your fabric scraps down into two and a half inch strips. And the length doesn't matter that much because we're going to cut these down further, but you want them all at the same width, two and a half inches wide. And remember, the more fabrics you have, the better. Now we're going to take those two and a half inch strips and we're going to subcut them down into smaller units. They can be a square, they can be smaller, like narrower or wider rectangles. The measurement that you cut at doesn't really matter. You just want to have a good amount of variety. So you'll notice I'm cutting some narrower and some wider than others until I end up with a bunch of little scrappy bits in a big pile. All right, so let's go over supplies. We cut our two and a half inch wide strips down into varying little chunks. That's gonna make up the exterior of our zipper pouch here, patchwork style. Then we have the batting. And for the batting, you'll need two and a half inch wide strips. You can cut it out from your own uh, leftover quilt batting scraps, but I prefer to use it like this. This is Katahdin on a roll. It's a Bozel product. It's cotton batting that already comes cut to two and a half inches wide. It makes it a lot easier. And we do sell it in a large bundle that's 50 yards big. So you can imagine how many different projects you'll be able to make using your scraps. With that, the link for that roll is in the description box below. You can order from our shop and we'll ship it right out to you. Then for the zipper, I recommend at least a 14 inch long number three craft zipper. We have two lining fabric pieces and the lining again is what goes on the inside. You can see, I'm gonna share with you my tips so that you can get a nice smooth finish on your lining too. I cut two rectangles of the lining fabric to eight and a half inches by 14. And then if you have some cotton woven fusible interfacing on hand, like this Bozel Fashion Fuse, go ahead and cut out a matching rectangle for each one of your lining pieces and we'll fuse that together in a bit. We have some cutting tools like a rotary cutter, some rulers, a cutting mat, and then I will also be using some sharp shears in this project. You have your sewing pins, some plastic sewing clips that come in handy. If you have a sewing machine with a zipper foot, go ahead and take that out for installing zippers that will help. And then of course your finishing uh, tools. We have our iron, you'll need an ironing board. And if you have a wooden tailor's clapper, go ahead and take it out. If you don't, click the link below so you can order one from us because this is a game changer. Then for my sewing machine, I need a machine that can sew straight that has a zipper foot. And for the thread, I just use either 100% cotton thread or an all purpose good quality polyester. And for the sewing machine needle, I'll just go ahead and use one of these universal size 8012 needles from this pack. Now we're ready to make one super long patchwork strip. You should be aiming to have about three and a half yards in length of your little scrappy bits pieced together. For the sewing machine setup, I went ahead and set my needle position. So we'll be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance from the edge of the foot and a straight stitch. And for the length, I want you to set it between two to 2.5 millimeter stitch length, all right? Then we're just gonna start mixing and matching these fabrics, making sure that the edge that we're sewing to connect two pieces is along the two and a half inch wide edge, right? That we initially cut those strips to. So if I wanna piece these two together, one on top of the other with pretty sides touching, and I'm just gonna stitch down the side here using that quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I'm not even gonna waste time back stitching at the beginning or at the end, just keep piecing these all together. When it comes to this part here, before we add the next piece of fabric, I just press the seam allowance to one side, either by scratching it right there, but make sure that you have this taut and pulled. You don't want any fabric bubbling in that seam. If you don't have fingernails or you don't wanna use your nail, you can use a seam presser like this, or even a hair marker, a little seam roller, whatever you have on hand that's going to allow you to press the seam right in place and then continue adding your next piece of fabric. So I'm just gonna continue to add strips here until I end up with, again, about three and a half yards in length of these pieced little patchwork chunks. All right, so I have my long strip here. Now we're gonna pick one end and we are going to sew this to the batting strip. So grab your two and a half inch wide batting strip. I'm gonna position fabric on top. For the sewing machine, I move my needle to the center position since we're just gonna be sewing random straight lines and I lengthen the stitch length to about 2.8. You could even do three millimeters a little bit longer than what we used here to piece the fabric together since now we're adding a layer of bulk with the batting. But all I want you to do is stitch some straight lines. They don't even have to be super straight. We're basically running some stitches to adhere the entire strip of fabric to 
a matching strip, right? The same length of the batting. So you can skip the distance that you want on the inside and between your stitch lines as much as you want to. It doesn't really matter the distance. Obviously, the closer you space your stitching lines, the more stitching you're going to have to do, the longer it will take. So if I've done one here, I'm just going to come somewhere into the next fabric piece. Stitch straight. You shouldn't even need a walking foot for this. Most home sewing machines are going to allow you to just stitch straight through with an 80-12 needle because it's not very bulky at all, okay? So all we're doing is basically attaching the fabric to the batting. The distance between your stitch lines doesn't really matter. I just wouldn't go much bigger than six or seven inches or so because you do want it to be attached and not have the fabric kind of looping like this. You want it to be lying flat against the batting strip and stitched into place to secure it. So continue to attach the whole chunk of fabric to the batting. Once you reach the end, you're going to cut off the rest of the batting from the roll. And we're ready to move on to the next step to make the exterior panels. Now we're going to cut this long strip down into individual cuts that measure 14 inches long. For the front of the zippered pouch, you're going to need four strips. So one, two, three, and four makes up part of the bottom. And then the other side, you need four as well. So I want you to cut this into eight pieces that measure 14 inches long. So we're just going to use the ruler on my mat here to give these rough cuts. Then you're gonna play around with the strips and position them so you get four. So just play around with your strips and position them how you might want them in the finished bag project. And once you're done with your layout, let's start sewing the rows together. You're gonna put one on top of the other and we'll sew with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. That will give us more room to press open our seam and go back in and give it some top stitching so we get this really nice quilted look on either side of that seam. All right, so you saw how we put together the first two rows. We pressed the seams open. I'm gonna go in and sew the remaining two rows to create this one panel, and then just repeat these steps to create a second panel that also is made up of four of your patchwork rows. Once you have your two panels, let's go ahead and clean them up by trimming them so that each panel measures eight and a half inches tall by 14 inches long. Now with the panels trimmed to size, let's go ahead and cut out squares on the bottom two corners of each panel. So if you have directional print like the mermaids, make sure that you're looking at it the way that it's gonna look in the finished pouch from top to bottom. And along the bottom two corners is where we are going to measure two inches in and two inches up. So we're gonna mark out a little square here and on this side too, and then we're gonna cut them out and that will help us box the corners later on. Two inches by two inches is what I use. Now I cut out the squares on the corners with scissors just to make sure that I don't go into the main fabric panel. This is a little bit more accurate cutting it by hand with scissors than using your rotary cutter. All right, those are the exterior panels and they've been prepped. Let's move on to the lining fabric. If you're using the cotton woven fusible interfacing that I mentioned in a previous step, go ahead and position it with the scratchy side facing up, which is to the wrong side of the fabric. We're gonna take our iron and ironing board and press these two together to fuse them and make a little bit more solid of a lining fabric panel. Then go in with a ruler and a rotary cutter and trim away any of the excess interfacing that may be sticking out beyond the fabric edge. And I almost forgot to go ahead and top stitch on either side, both on the right and the left side of every one of the seams that we have where we joined the rows together. So this can be done now. It could have been done before you cut out the squares on the bottom corners too. 
I'm just gonna lengthen my stitch length to about three millimeters and I'm just stitching an eighth of an inch to the right and to the left. Basically what this is doing is helping us keep the seams pressed open. So it's catching the seam allowance to this way and this way so we get a nice flat feeling panel for the exterior of the bag. And repeat that top stitching to the other panel too. Once you have both exterior panels top stitch, go ahead and set those aside. Let's grab our zipper. Now, this pattern calls for a 14 inch or longer number three, AKA craft zipper. And that's exactly what I have here, number uh, 14 inch one. And then I have two little pieces of fabric that measure one and a quarter inches square. So one and a quarter by one and a quarter. First thing we need to do is cut this zipper to size. I wanna get rid of the metal here and here so I don't potentially run the risk of hitting it or trying to sew through the metal at a later step. So I wanna cut the zipper down so from end to end with no metal measures 13 inches. So I'm gonna cut this off here to get rid of that metal and then I will measure from that fresh cut edge over 13 inches, which is gonna put me right here. And I'm gonna carefully cut there so I still have my zipper pull inside. Do not swing it off because you're gonna end up flying it off the edge. It's easy to put back on, but it will come off. So I'm just gonna set mine like this. Then I'm gonna take one of my squares. These are gonna be your little zipper tab ends for either side. So one of these is gonna go pretty side of the fabric on top of the zipper teeth, and I'm gonna stitch across at a quarter of an inch seam allowance over from both raw edges. Then let's push the fabric away from it. We'll flip it. Now this raw edge of fabric, I want you to fold it onto itself just to where it touches the raw edge of the zipper that you cut, like that, and then we're gonna refold it onto itself again, and that's gonna completely conceal the raw edge of the zipper that we trimmed up, okay? Next step is to flip it back here to the pretty side, and I want you to top stitch across here, making sure that you're catching all the layers so that that stays held down like that. And then we're gonna repeat those steps to the other end of the zipper as well. Now let's trim up the sides of the zipper tab ends flush with the edge of the zipper tape. Okay. So the zipper's prepped. Now let's grab one of the exterior panels so we can start adding the zipper to the fabric. All right, y'all, let's make this thing. So take one exterior panel and your prep zipper. Quick note, the zipper should be shorter than the top edge of the panel because if you recall, this is 14 inches. We cut our zipper to 13 inches. That means that now when we open the zipper a little bit, we're gonna flip it pretty side face down onto this top edge. And when we do so, I want you to make sure that you space out or basically split the difference of that extra that you have. So you should have about half of an inch of exterior fabric showing beyond the zipper end and the same thing to the opposite side. Once that's even, line everything up along the top edge and place your clips. Now at the sewing machine, I'm going to remove my universal presser foot and put on my zipper foot since we're going to stitch a zipper on. Now this first row of stitching is just a basting stitch. So you can leave the needle in the center default position for your zipper foot and the length of the stitching can actually be lengthened because we're gonna sew a shorter, tighter, more construction-based seam in the next round. So I'm sewing at a really scant seam allowance here. I'm sewing only at about an eighth of an inch over from the top edge. Okay, so that has been sewn into place, but it's somewhat of a temporary hold because the true construction stitch is gonna come next when we put this lining panel pretty side of the lining face down. The zipper should be sandwiched basically in between your two fabric layers. Now here, when we go in and put our clips and sew this edge, we're gonna sew the full seam allowance. So whatever your zipper foot is, some are a quarter inch, some are about three eighths of an inch or so, go ahead and use that seam allowance to now attach the lining and adhere all three layers with a shorter straight stitch. So for this construction seam, I shorten my stitch length down back into that default range of two to 2.5 millimeters in length. I'm gonna start all the way at the end of the fabric and stitch all the way across, moving the zipper pull out of your way when you get close to it if you can't stitch past it. 
All right, so I've pulled the fabric layers away from the zipper, gave it a good press. Now we wanna go ahead and copy over the squares that we trimmed out of the exterior panel, but we also wanna cut out matching two inch by two inch squares from our lining fabric. So if you did a good job and you were pretty accurate on the front end, you can go ahead and trace that over. If not, you could also use the boxes on your cutting mat or a ruler as well, just to go in mark the boxes and trim them up on this side. After this, the, the next step is going to be to top stitch in this area. The top stitching is gonna be about an eighth of an inch down from where the fabric meets the zipper edge, and I'm stopping at the ends of the zipper, so I'm not top stitching all the way to the end. So there's the top stitching from there to there. All right, so let's take the remaining exterior panel. We're gonna base stitch it like we did before, first to the zipper tape edge, and then we'll add in that lining fabric. So pretty side facing down. I'm matching up the side edges of the fabric panels because those two match. Remember, the zipper is shorter, so we can flip it over and make sure that we have the same distance on each end. Place some sewing clips, and we're gonna sew using an eighth of an inch seam allowance to begin. All right, and then from that same edge that we just sewed, you should be looking at the lining side, okay, of the other panel. You're gonna take your other remaining lining panel and position it pretty side facing down. So both lining panels should be pretty sides touching. We're lining it up with this edge again, and then we're gonna sew the regular zipper foot seam allowance, whether your machine zipper foot is a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch for this size zipper that you're using. Go ahead and place your clips, and we're gonna stitch straight down here from edge to edge of fabric. Now we give everything a good press, and then we're gonna to top stitch on this side too, like we did on the first side. Now we top stitch, remember from zipper tab end to the other side end. Next, let's trim up the bottom corners on the lining side again. Now grab some sewing clips or pins, and I want you to grab exterior panel and exterior panel and bring these two together. You're gonna match them along all the sides and place clips, and then pick it up and flip this this way so that you have lining and lining panels also pretty sides touching. So we're gonna place clips all the way around here. Quick note, make sure that you look inside here and open up this zipper at least about halfway, okay? On the bottom of the lining side, go ahead and mark about four to five inches of an area that you're gonna wanna leave unstitched so we can flip the whole bag out through this opening. So this area here, I will leave it unstitched, meaning I'm gonna start stitching here, back stitch, and I'm gonna use on the lining side a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and on the exterior side, I'm going to phase out into here when I come from lining to exterior side so that I can use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now the reason for that is we want to eat up more fabric using a larger seam allowance on the lining side than the exterior, and and that is what's going to allow you to get a nice fit with the lining on the inside of the pouch, okay? So although the pieces were cut to the same size, if we use a larger seam allowance on the lining side, it ends up fitting nice and smooth like this, whereas if you use a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around all sides, you're gonna end up with a really baggy lining because it's inside of the exterior, okay? So that's just a quick note for y'all. Let's get rid of the zipper foot put back on our regular universal foot, and let's stitch it up.
right, once the sides are sewn up, we are going to come into the four corners here and we're gonna box them up. So in order to do that, you're gonna open it up here and now match up the side seam with the bottom seam, like this. Now you can press these seams open with your fingers if you want to and place a clip right there so you get a good connection at the intersection. And then you're gonna use the same seam allowance. So if I'm on the lining side, I'm using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm stitching across here, back stitching at the beginning and end. And I'll repeat that on all four corners. Just remember that on the lining corners, we're using the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And when we go in here to box the exterior panel corners, all we're sewing is a quarter of an inch seam allowance, still wanting to match up the intersection right there. Okay, so everything has been stitched up and we are ready to reach into the opening on the lining portion to flip the whole thing right side out. A couple of things to note though, make sure that when you sewed across the sides here, you were using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So when you come from the exterior panel side to the lining, go a quarter of an inch past here. And the reason for that, even though we're using a larger seam allowance on the lining section, as I mentioned earlier, if you sew a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the end here, you're gonna end up sewing through or trying to sew through a ton of bulk. The point of having the zipper be shorter than the full size fabric panels is so that we skim the sides and don't catch those zipper tab ends on the ends of the zipper so you get a nice clean finish on the ends of your zippers. So if you sewed too wide, you're gonna have to rip those stitches out and go back to a quarter of an inch here and then the rest of the way on the lining side use that bigger chunkier 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance if that makes sense. All right, so let's flip it out through here. Grab everything, flip it out. We'll check the ends of our zipper. We'll give it a good press. And then the last step is just gonna be to close up that opening once everything looks good. All right, so just push the lining all the way in there. And isn't it wild how smooth that lining lies inside of the pouch? Because we used a significantly bigger seam allowance. So apologies for the shadows there, but you can see what we're working with here. I am now, once I audition it like this, then I'll just go in here, grab the lining. I'm just gonna tug on it on the ends like this so the raw edges go inside. And then either by hand or by machine, we're gonna stitch an eighth of an inch down from this top edge just in the opening area here, back stitching at the beginning and at the end to close that hole right up. Give the finished pouch a final press and you're done. All right, and that is it. I hope you all enjoyed this step-by-step -step video tutorial on how to make these scrappy zippered pouches. If you did, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, please, and click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.